Darren here with Learn Film Photography and today we're going to talk about how to shoot film at night. If you've ever bought a really expensive high ISO roll of film to go out and shoot film at night only to then get it developed and come home with thin off-colored negatives, it's not your fault. Shooting film is inherently different than shooting digital and especially at night. Over the last two years, I've been shooting a ton of film at night. Um, it's one of my favorite times to go out and take photos and I've made so many mistakes. Like just check out a few of these awful photos here. So today I'm gonna go over the tips that I have used that have transformed my film photography from this to this. So tip number one is to expose for the shadows. Film is a lot different than digital. It can recover the highlights super well, but it cannot recover the shadows. And this is the number one mistake that new film photographers always make because they're probably not using a proper light meter. The one in your camera can be okay, but it doesn't necessarily tell you where you're actually exposing for. So if you're exposing, if you point your camera at the light, it's gonna choose the light source as what to expose for and then the shadows are gonna be lost completely. So the best thing you can do if you don't wanna buy an expensive light meter is to use the light meter app by WB Photo. This is what I've been using for years and it has the best spot meter function that you just pick a point on the screen and it will tell you exactly what the exposure is gonna be for that exact point. What I mean by exposing for the shadows is in this scene here, if I expose for the brightest area, which is closest to the light source, I will be able to use a faster shutter speed, but I will lose all of the detail in the shadow and I can't bring that back by pushing. So metering for the shadows is just looking for the dark part of the image that I also want details in and exposing for that part with the knowledge that film retains details in the highlights, even if they are overexposed. That will give me an even exposure and a better image. And if you're in doubt about your exposure, simply double it. If you're using color film, you'll always be able to bring back the exposure. But if you're using black and white, it doesn't overexpose as well, but color is perfect. It's flawless every time. And tip number two is to use the right film. So there's a reason that we all love using Cinestill 800T for night shots, and it's not just because of the halations. The Cinestill 800T is the only tungsten balanced color film on the market, and that means that you don't have to use an exposure adjustment. Now you may not know this, but every other color film on the market requires a two-stop ISO adjustment. So Portra 800, for example, has to be shot at ISO 200, and Portra 400 has to be shot at ISO 100 under tungsten light to create a perfect exposure. That means if you're out shooting street photos, or if you're in a bar or other low light places like indoors, where you wanna capture emotion or use a high speed film to get a faster shutter, speed, it's not really going to work. You're going to very much underexpose your film unless your subject is perfectly lit up or you're using a flash. So if your night photos look like a complete mess, even though you were exposing right, this ISO adjustment might be the reason why. Because two stops of underexposure is pretty significant on film, which does not capture much detail in the shadows. Just because Cinestill 800T is the de facto night photography film doesn't mean it's the only one that you can use. For example, I took this photo with Fuji Pro 400H, this one was with Cinestill 400D, and this one here it was taken with Kodak Gold of all films. So as long as you know what you're doing, as long as you make the right exposure adjustments, you're gonna be able to get a good exposure on film at night. Now, on the other hand, black and white film is mostly chromatic. So if your film isn't an ortho film, you're gonna be fine. You can expose it at box speed under tungsten light, no problems. And one bonus tip that I wanted to give you guys, Ilford Delta 3200 and Kodak P3200, these are two ISO 3200 films at box speed. But what they don't tell you on the box is that it's actually an ISO 1000 film. So you can find that on the technical data sheets of Ilford and Kodak. What that means is that when you are shooting these two films, you are not shooting ISO 3200 film, you're shooting ISO 1000 film and then pushing it two stops in post. And Usually that works out well. You can usually get really good images at ISO 3200, but in order to get better photos on these two film stocks, you should be shooting it at about ISO 1600, and then you can use the normal development times. That's how I have started to get way better photos on these two film stocks. Delta 3200 is one of my favorite films of all time. I really love the classic high grain look that it creates. Check out the link below if you wanna see a review of this film and how to take better photos with Ilford Delta 3200.
So tip number three is to calculate for reciprocity failure. If you have an exposure time that's longer than two seconds on every film other than Fuji Acros 2, you'll need to calculate for reciprocity failure. What happens is after two seconds, the light simply isn't strong enough to create a proper exposure on the film grains. That means that you just need to do a simple calculation that will allow you to get a perfect exposure every time. That calculation looks like this. It is metered time in seconds to the power of 1.31. Now, every film in their technical data sheet might have a slightly different exposure adjustment to work with, but this one works for the vast majority of films. And in fact, I've never looked at the technical data sheet for the films that I've been using, and I've always come away with a good exposure using this method. And tip number four is to put your subject in the light. So this is a big one. This is a big mistake that a lot of people make because film does not expose the shadows very well. There's no recovering it if you underexpose your subject. So the best way to make sure that your subjects pop is to put them under the very best light. And then what will happen is they will be perfectly exposed and the, all the distractions in the background will just melt away in the image. Now, if you don't have the patience to get them under the right light, or if you don't have very many good lights around, the next best thing is to use a flash. So. Nearly every point and shoot camera out there has a built-in flash, but if you don't have a point and shoot camera, you can always get the flashes from Godox, which I'll link below, but you can also always get a really cool camera like the Ilford Sprite 35-2. It's focus-free and has a flash built in and it's perfect. The best thing about flash is that because it's daylight balanced, you don't need to do any exposure adjustments for the film. So it just works every time. Tip number five is pushing sometimes helps, but not really. The thing with film is there's no shortcuts. That's why we use this medium. You have to get the perfect exposure settings in the moment. You can't just use a faster shutter speed and expect that you're gonna fix it with some magic film developer in post. If the film grains don't capture enough light, you're not gonna be able to recover that image. Even if you push it three stops, all you're gonna end up with is a more contrasty image. And this is especially true with color film. Black and white film is a little bit more forgiving and there are developers like Microfen or DDX which do naturally push film, but they don't bring out detail that was never there in the first place. At the end of the day, you need to be metering the scene properly. You need to make sure that there's good light on your subject and that you're using a, the right shutter speed or reciprocity failure adjustment if you are doing landscape photography with exposure settings that are longer than two seconds. Okay, so that's it for this video today. If you didn't like this, let me know down in the comments below what I got wrong. If you did learn a lot from this video, please like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel and it's totally free to you and you're gonna get to see some more awesome content like this. And if you wanna support Learn Film Photography, you can check out some of my zines or you can submit your own zine ideas at softgrainbooks.com. This is a publisher that I co-founded to help support lens-based artists around the world. And this is way better than a Patreon because you're actually getting something cool in return and you're helping support other artists just like you. All right, thanks so much and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.